Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. I'm very privileged to have a very special guest that I'll be interviewing today. His name is Micah McDonald. And Michael McDonald um, is all about deep value. You know, I, I love a bargain. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> I love good value. And uh, Mr. McDonald is an expert at uh, value investing, among other things. And he's going to tell us about the Deep Value ETF Accumulator. Ooh, that sounds fancy. I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, Mr. McDonald, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you, David. appreciate uh, you asking me to interview with you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I mean, it's, it's an honor and a privilege. And, uh, you know, I've been following you on Stock Twits and Twitter for a while now. And, uh, but, you know, I want to go back to the beginning. What is your background uh, in stocks and finance in general? Okay, uh, basically no uh, formal background. I, I was uh, I had a part-time job a long time ago, and I had invested in the 401k there. And uh, when I left that job, I had some money, and I let uh, I, I let a professional handle that money for me mm -hmm. because I didn't want to deal with it at the time. And after a few years, I, I didn't like the performance, so I decided to take that on myself. And uh, I started just buying stocks that I, I thought that were good stocks. I had no uh, no inkling of what was a good or a bad stock. I just thought I would buy them and hold them for a while and sell them when I had a profit. And, and I did okay, um, even through uh, 2008. Uh, pretty much performed about what the market did. Not much worse, not much better. And then after that, uh, I, I started reading information from uh, IBD. Uh, the Investor's Business Daily. Right. Uh, read a lot of the books uh, and so forth, and I started trading the, uh, the growth stocks. Now, what I found out by doing that is uh, I'm not very good at uh, either trend or day trading or anything like that. I'm, I'm kind of a long term investor, and I the reason I wasn't good at that is because I have a very hard time selling at a loss, even at a small loss. And meanwhile, while I was playing around with that, I discovered um, triple leveraged ETFs, and and I pretty much fell in love with them because of the 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 speed at which they grow if if you uh, tap into them when they're down. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so I was doing quite well with uh, TQQ, the triple leveraged uh, NASDAQ 100. I was doing really well with the BIB, which is a double leveraged uh, IBV or the biotech uh, index, uh, and a few others I was doing quite well. And then I uh, discovered uh, oil, triple leveraged oil, and a lot of people are familiar on stock twits with UWTI, DWTI. There. They're now defunct, yeah. but uh, I got in with the, when those were trading about maybe five or ten thousand shares a day. Uh, they exploded when uh, oil crashed, up to uh, tens of millions of shares being traded a day. So I, I, I traded them when they were still on the uh, ETF death watch. If you're familiar with that yeah. place, yep, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> right, and so I was doing really well. Oil was hovering between ninety to one hundred and ten dollars a barrel, and I just simply bought uh, UWTI when it drift down into the nineties, low nineties. I sell it when I get up into the the mid one hundreds, and then I would turn around buy DWTI and ride it on the way down. And I thought I was pretty good at what I was doing. I was making uh, probably a thousand dollars a month or more just uh, playing around with that, but. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing, so uh, in, in 2014, oil crashed, and I saw a buying opportunity, at least what I thought was a buying opportunity, and um, it got down into the low 80s, and I said, what, what a perfect opportunity, so I dumped some more money in there to try and make up some of my losses in UWTI, and it kept falling, and about once a month, I'd keep buying. Uh, about every 15% drop, I dropped. I dropped another thousand dollars into that fund, just uh, just to play catch up. I thought, well, it's got to go back up someday. It's got to go back up someday. Hmm. I, I bought it all the way down to the bottom, all the way into the 20, 20 some dollar a barrel yeah. um, range. Um, so in that time frame, I sunk about oh. 
close to thirty thousand dollars into the UWTI, and I, I'd given up on it. Uh, I'd lost so much money. I lost twenty-five grand on that thing, and I'd given up on it. But I was going to hold on to it forever until oil came up, or just lose it all. I didn't really care anymore. Right. I, I, so um, November of twenty sixteen rolled around. They they decided to close the fund. So I sold my funds. My UWTI, I took my $25,000 loss, and uh, in that two-year process, uh, the the deep value ETF accumulator was born. Uh, it was born out of uh, disgust with my uh, lack of uh, studying in, into what I was investing, uh, my lack of discipline on trading, um, all that. Uh, so I started studying. I studied really hard. I, I probably got the equivalent of a four years bachelor's degree hmm. in finance in those in those two years of studying. Right. And I discovered people like uh, uh, Paul Merriman mm -hmm. uh, and many others, um, value investors. Uh, most of them into index funds. Uh, they intrigued me. They um, I like the um, the study behind it. There's a lot of uh, um, academics behind all that uh, studying of index funds and how they typically, not always, typically outperform most actively managed mutual funds. Um, and I'm thinking about actively managed mutual funds. Now these are people who study the markets, they live and breathe the markets, they're paid to work in the markets and they have trouble beating the market. Right. And that's what uh, helped me understand that I probably, unless I endeavor to spend even more time on each company that I buy, uh, I'm probably not going to beat the market either. So I, I almost threw up my hands and said, well, I'll just do a, a typical dollar cost averaging. I'll just throw my money in and a certain percentage to this sector of the market or this uh, size, you know, large cap, mid cap, or value, or uh, and, and kind of do like uh, maybe Paul Merrill would recommend. He maybe has 10 funds you would put money into throughout the world, very well diversified. Um, but I had a real hard time uh, believing that buying at market tops was the best, uh, best place to put my money. Right, for uh, sure. So I said, well, why why does there need to be a perfect balance? If you decided to put ten percent in each fund or twenty five percent in each fund, why why the need to keep a perfect balance? Why not uh, purchase uh, even if you've only selected four funds or ten funds or uh, twenty some funds such as I have? Uh, why not buy the one that has been uh, beat up the most. Why, why not buy the one that has fallen from grace and uh, the entire world is hating on that industry or that sector or that whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and because th th this is all cyclical. Uh, I, I told you I might bring up the, uh, the picture that I found on the internet and I, I put it on my website as a background. Uh, and this is the way I look at markets now. I, I look at the markets as uh, an interweaving of many, many sine waves. All of these different sine waves intertangled with each other up and down, up and down. And why not buy them when they're down? And so that's what I've done. I've, I've put together about 25 different ETFs that I'm willing to invest my heart and money into. And I try to buy them on the low. Uh, right now, it's really hard to find anything cheap. Uh, even Mexico is coming back. Uh, you, you know, I, I track Mexico and I track yeah. uh, I track uh, real estate. Real estate's just staying right where it's at. It's not going up. It's not going down. Uh, oil's starting to come back down a little bit. The oil stocks and they're they're looking interesting, but. With this current rally we're in, uh, even I, who call myself a deep value ETF accumulator, is having a difficult time finding anything that's uh, seriously cheap. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's tough to find a value when everything is over. Everything seems to be overvalued. Uh, very true. And I like what you said about the market 
uh, being cyclical, and, and I did see the picture, and I'm going to throw that up on the screen um, during this conversation, and also uh, I'd like to right now take the opportunity for you to um, mention your, your website and any services you might offer. Uh, how can people find your website and, and find you generally? Uh, I can be found at deepvalueetfaccumulator.com. Uh, I've also bought the URL dvetf.com. Um, and then also I'm on StockTwits at Deep Value ETF Accumulator. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I think it's, yeah, it's Micah McDonald8 uh, on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook under Micah McDonald. Um, I really don't have any services to sell. Uh, I'm providing what I uh, do free of charge at this time. I, I don't have any intent on selling anything. I do uh, plan to learn uh, WordPress a little bit better, maybe have some affiliate links on there someday. Sure. Uh, so uh, if, if I can make enough money to pay for my website, which is pretty cheap, uh, I'd be satisfied with that someday. But uh, right now, nothing to sell. Uh, this this is basically my due diligence. Uh, I'm sharing with the world my due diligence. Uh, I've put a lot of time, study, effort into this. Um, I would not recommend anybody buy what's on my list without their own due diligence. Of course, uh, absolutely. And uh, many people uh, would not be comfortable with owning uh, upwards of 20 to 30 different ETFs. Uh, I don't own them all yet. I have big plans. So, you know, the, my my future right now. I've only got a little over 100 grand invested. Um, I I hope to have a minimum of 10,000 in each of these funds, which would represent a two to three hundred thousand dollars. And at that point, if you go back and look at the the picture of the sine wave that I showed you, uh, I can envision something like this spinning off. You know, maybe a thousand dollars a week or a thousand dollars a month of just uh, excess returns that I'm just dumping into another fund that uh, is currently beat up. And uh, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with those kinds of returns. Uh, you'll still be doing better than most retail traders. <laughs> so that's uh, that, that's pretty good, right. I would say. Right. And I'll give you a little bit more background on each one of these ETFs. Now, I I went back and I used my stock Scott Trade account and I select I selected ten years and beyond. Anything 10 years or older that's an ETF that has a positive return. And then I, I weeded all those out. Anything that was below the S&P 500 on a 10 year or longer return didn't get put in the mix as an asset class, not, not particularly an ETF itself, but I was looking at asset classes. So I took all those asset classes that had beaten, uh, it had at least one fund that beat the S&P 500 during those 10 plus years. And now I, I took that asset class and I went into ETF. Uh, excuse me, ETF database. Um, com, ETF DB. Com, and I went and looked for all the different funds that were older than uh, October 2007. Now most people realize that October 2007 was the top of the last um, bull market, and it, it crashed severely for the next couple years. And so the reason I, I don't select any newer funds than that, they don't have enough history for me. Uh, so if, if you were to pick one of the ETFs on my list, uh, it is my uh, opinion that they are the best ETF out there in that asset class. They may not be the best for everybody, but uh, they're, they're, they beat the S&P 500 and they beat every other ETF in that category that is uh, older than two, October 2007. So um, it's not just a random list, it's uh, a lot of due diligence went into that. That's fantastic. Uh, all the research that you're doing, and you're putting this out for free right now, I can't imagine why people would not take advantage of it. I will put in the description uh, your website and your your contact information through stock twits and Twitter why not follow mr. McDonald and take advantage of all the hard work and and due diligence that he's doing and of course I, I'm I always put a disclaimer on my uh, videos that uh, you know we're not telling you what to buy we're not telling you what to sell we're just telling you what we might do 
and how we might approach things. Uh, but Mr. McDonald has a, a really amazing approach. Uh, it takes a lot of guts to, to buy uh, an ETF that has been beaten up. Uh, that's when most people run away from it. And so I, I, really, I really admire that. Um, so uh, let, let me ask you about this. Uh, it's still a fairly new year. It's uh, the 15th of February 2017. Um, is your trading going to be different in 2000, 2017? And will the new administration have any effect on your trading or investing? I think he, uh, the new administration is already having an effect on my uh, portfolio and, and the way I trade, not necessarily the way I trade, uh, but how I can select uh, certain funds. It's, as I stated before, it's really difficult to find a good fund. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually looking, for the, looking forward to the next market correction. Uh, if you believe that or not, uh, because I will be ready. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm always ready for that. Uh, and then um, I don't think anything on the macro level that I'm going to change, uh, but on the micro level, I, I have noticed that I'm, I have this feeling I'm putting too much in, uh, funds into uh, a particular fund. I had envisioned a fund would stay down for a couple months, maybe at the most, and then I'd be on the next one. And what I found is sometimes these funds drop for upwards of a year or more. So I, I think I'm going to start limiting myself to about ten grand in each fund, at least until I can get some more money in some of the other funds. So uh, just micro um, micro changes on on my own portfolio. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Um, so this is a question that I ask to a lot of people and I, I get all kinds of different really fascinating answers. Um, you know, there, there's a statistic floating around that 90% of retail traders fail at it. They, they lose money over the long term. Um, is this fixable and, and how, can, how can we improve this number? Uh, yeah, I think it's fixable uh, just like any other um, thing that you would go learn how to do. If I picked up a guitar, a guitar and I decided to play it without any instruction or without any assistance or at least study and actually actively playing that thing day in and day out, I, I'm probably not going to get very good at it. Right. Um, but with okay. proper training, and I, I could probably at least you know, play in a backyard ba barbecue or something. Yeah. Uh, same thing with trading. I, I think it's very important that uh, especially new people uh, to find uh, a mentor, uh, read as much as you can, but uh, digest it carefully. You don't want to uh, just do everything that everybody recommends because everybody has a different recommendation. So they need, they need to know themselves. I didn't know myself. I told you I failed uh, miserably on trading UWTDI, DWTI. Um, the, the biggest thing I can tell you there uh, is I learned about myself. Uh, and if you can learn yourself, you, you can learn how to trade. Uh, there's many people who are, are successful. Uh, but we read about those who are failures uh, because there are so many of them. Uh, the people, they don't put the, in the time and the effort to study what they're trading. I, I foresee myself getting back into the trading arena, but uh, I, I will probably be looking for those value stocks and I'll be looking for value stocks that pay a dividend so that uh, just in case uh, they they decide to perform well, uh, I can hold on to them for a long period of time and collect the dividend at the same time. Yeah. Um, but I won't, I won't go into it again without um, the due diligence, the study and the, uh, the, the discipline it takes to be successful as an investor or a trader. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I, I think it was yesterday. Uh, I, again, I, I recommend everybody should follow you, follow you on social media such as uh, StockTwits and Twitter. Um, I saw a quote from you on StockTwits.com, which is a, a message board for traders and investors. And uh, <laughs> you said, I hope I'm not misquoting you, but I love this quote. I'm an accumulator not a soothsayer. <laughs> I, I love that quote. Um, can you expand on that? What does that mean? Yeah, I, I regularly get uh, asked a question by followers, and, and I appreciate the questions. I, this is not a put-down, uh, but, but I, 
number one, I don't know where the market's going tomorrow, and, and I don't believe anybody else does for that matter. I, I think certain people in certain industries have a good feel of which way an industry or a, a stock may go, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not Nostradamus. Uh, I simply am a, an, a, a glorified uh, dollar cost averager. Uh, that's all I am. And uh, these guys want some information from me. Uh, basically what I what I put out every single day that's all I have that's all I have to go on I, I typically invest in the number one buy pick that I provide every day sometimes I pick number two this week I'm picking number two I've got too much too much money in Mexico so I'm still I'm still accumulating uh, more uh, real stocks uh, real estate stocks so I have nothing more to offer than what I provide every day on stock twits and Twitter. But it's really amazing what you do offer. And I, I really like the way you put it in handy chart format. People can see, oh, he's invested in EWW, the, the Mexico ETF, or RYU, the utilities UT ETF, whatever it might be. You can see it, and you've got all the percentages there, uh, how far down it is, and you can see what kind of value it is that you're getting. And, and the fact that you're providing this as a public service right now is, is really commendable. Um, and, uh, you know, th this, is, this has been an amazing experience. I really want people to, you know, I, to check you out, uh, on, again, on social media and on your website. Um, what, one more quick question before, before I ask you to provide that information again. Um, why focus on ETFs in particular? Why not just be a stock picker? Uh, once again, I, I, don't, I don't think I have the discipline to be a stock picker. I don't know which one's going to be the diamond in the rough. Uh, I remember a quote, and I, and I might mess this quote up, and, and I think it was from Jack Bogle. Uh, he says, why buy, why search for the needle in the haystack when you can own the entire haystack? So uh, uh, yep. with, with all the funds that are available to everybody today, uh, you can literally own the haystack. And I don't mean just in the United States, I mean worldwide, you can literally own the haystack. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Actually, I've heard that quote before. That's a, and yeah, that's a great quote and a great uh, philosophy on it. Um, and you know, I, I really appreciate you spending this time with me today. Um, I can't wait to post this and put it out. But before I do, um, let me thank Michael McDonald for uh, joining me today and enlightening me on, on his methodology and um, if I can get you to one more time and I'll put it in the description, I'll put all the links but again, uh, if people want to take part of, of your due diligence and your, your knowledge on this uh, deep value investing methodology um, how, can they, how can they find you? Yeah, once again uh, deepvalueetfaccumulator.com or dvetf.com for short uh, same on stock twips stock twits deep value ETF accumulator uh, and then Twitter uh, you're gonna find me at Micah McDonald 8 and on Facebook I am Micah McDonald my first name is spelled M-I-C-A-H last name just like the restaurant right <laughs> very good sir well uh, Micah McDonald thank you so much for joining me today um, you know, I, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to promote you to anybody and everybody who will listen um, because, uh, you know, again, I really appreciate the, the public service that, that you're doing for everybody. So thanks again, Mr. McDonald. Uh, thank you, David. I've, I've taken time to look at your uh, websites and your videos, and uh, same to you. I, I appreciate all you guys out there that are, are doing these type of interviews uh, and providing uh, basically a free education to some some people who are just out there that just don't know and if they can learn before they invest uh, that that's even better that's what it's all about absolutely thank you Mike I really appreciate it today and thank you too David okay thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time